important thing to recall is that opportunities arise from changes in the environment, trends that are going forward. We've talked about, talked about technology trends, we talked about market trends, we talked about demographic and social trends as people, groups, certain groups age, other cohorts come along, um, mixing of different ethnicities and the like. There are political and economic trends. The market goes up, the market goes down, you have transfer of, uh, of, of resources from one culture, one country to another, globalization. You have various kinds of economic effects, but also the government is involved. They pass new regulations about how, how things are taxed, what sorts of things are allowed, how financial transactions were deregulated in the 90s and that caused some of these bubbles and then they're re-regulated, that might cause certain things. So the economic and political trends that are essentially manufactured by how human, human beings interact, those also create opportunities. So you have technical, you have political and economic, you have social and demographic, and you have market trends. All of these things come together. And when you think about your opportunity and the ideas pop into your head, you should think about, okay, is this something that's just today or tomorrow, or does it have this, is it part of this longer process? which creates real big opportunities over the long term. Those are the ones you want to jump into. Um, starting a health club, for example, was a really popular thing back in the uh, 80s and 90s as this big wave of baby boomers started to worry that they were getting older, so they started to open health clubs, and there was a big trend that way. And there are echoes as other generations uh, become older, and they want to... They want their own thing, so there's, there's opportunities there. But the idea is, your idea, does it fit into these longer term trends and patterns? Think about how that works. Also, think that some of the opportunities favor incumbents, and some say that is the existing businesses, and some favor us as startups. That's an important thing to keep in mind as you go forward, because you do not want to go into a battle with the big guys, particularly if the big guys have all of the advantages in the marketplace. For example, if you need to have a lot of stores to sell your stuff, it has, you have to distribute it to a lot of places. You need to have a lot of trucking and logistics and purchasing and the like in order to be successful at whatever it is that you're selling. How do you go up against Best Buy in that kind of a scenario? They already have all that. They have advertising. They have a name brand. Uh, all they have to do is add another product or service. You have to build all of that from scratch, right? So they can, they can bring all of their assets, they call complementary assets, all of their reputation into, into play. They only have to charge, they only have to make a little bit more money on your product, and if, on the new product. In fact, they could almost lose money on that as long as they're making money elsewhere to make sure you don't get into their space. So they have all of these capabilities to compete with you. You want to find industries that you have an advantage and those are typically whenever there is a this creative destruction, things have changed, the, um, the, the playing field has been leveled by a new technology like the internet or like smartphones and applications, um, like social media, these things that come on board that change the rules so the big guys can't wield all this power anymore and you have some equal, at least an equal positioning. Also, when it takes human beings to make this all work, like a, for example, a music or or fashion or design, engineering, those kinds of things where a whole bunch of really smart people have to come together or creative people, that you have an advantage because if somebody else does that, they have to do exactly the same thing. They have to get those people together. You can do that, they can do that, but they have lots of baggage. They have to worry about their existing customers. They have things that actually work against them in those kinds of industries. They have the learning curve on their favor you have creativity, newness, change on your, in your favor, particularly when it involves not a lot of physical assets like buildings and things and cars and trucks and equipment, but human beings because you can recruit them and you can work together as a team to come up with something brand new and different. Right? So that's what you want to think about in opportunities, trends, but which ones favor me as well? And that starts eliminating ones that you could get rid of on this. We talked about the signal processing. You get rid of the ones that are false alarms, that could be false alarms, because you identify the fact that there may be something there, but it really will be taken over by the existing players. 
I really can't compete there. So that's those are the way that you eliminate what might ultimately be false alarms as they come along, as all of these new ideas and new opportunities come along. You pick the one that turns out is both an opportunity and something that favors you as you capitalize on it. You have to be careful as you're evaluating these not to fall into these mental traps. Use the resources that you have, the working memory, all the different elements of your experience that you bring to the table, as well as all your, ha your history, your skills, the things you know and the things that you've learned, not just yourself but your teams, bringing together these various kinds of experience and intelligence, getting the right complementary team together that can work together effectively, and then evaluate the opportunity in that way, in that context, as a team, looking for the trends, making sure you don't fall into these mental ruts, and making sure that you have the opportunity, you have the advantage over the existing players. You can create something new and different that they can, might be hampered because of their old ways of doing things. You can create a new world. You can create a new business. You can do things differently. You can do them better. You can do them cost effectively. You can grow a business that sustains itself with a solid value proposition. And you don't allow yourself to become overconfident, think you can do things that other people can't do, but you can bring the right pieces together and grow your business going forward. That's the notion of finding and exploiting an opportunity before you do the hard work of actually building the business. The next module, we'll start talking about how you actually build your business going forward, how you create the business model and the business plan that develops your business and, makes it and takes it forward. But that'll be our next module. We've just completed the opportunities modules, parts one and two, where they come from and how you identify them. Talk soon. Look forward to, to uh, talking again when we talk about the business model modules.